This week, our passage is the sort of introduction to Abraham, uh, or Abram as he's called uh, in this passage. Uh, uh, Abram, I- Abraham uh, is, of course, uh, the father of nations. Uh, he's one of the patriarchs. Uh, he's someone who is a very major character in Genesis. So Genesis focuses a lot on him. Uh, and his descendants. Um, and this story, uh, you know, I kind of want to take a moment and sort of highlight some things in it and, and kind of, you know, sort of work through uh, a kind of the bigger sort of message that we can sort of take away from this. Uh, so I want to really, the main thing I really want to highlight here uh, is just kind of how this whole thing happens, how this whole uh, beginning of his journey uh, occurs. Uh, you know, Abram is there with his father, uh, they have uh, living in a place called Haran, uh, and you know uh, they. Abram seems to have been already established. He's at this point already married. Uh, he, you know, he has obviously wealth, uh, servants, all these types of things. And God comes to him at this point and says, "I want you to pack up your things and start going until I tell you to stop." <laughs> Uh, which is, you know, a, for seems like, you know, it would be something that, you know, might give any individual sort of pause. I mean, this is a very different type of, of situation of calling. Uh, but Abram follows anyway. Abram, uh, you know, he, he understands that God is calling him to something that is greater and he doesn't need to necessarily know all the details. And so he goes out and it's here as he encounters uh, the land of Canaan, as he's kind of going in there, uh, that God visits him again and says, this is the land uh, that I'm going to give your descendants and this is you know the sort of the, what would become eventually that the promised land the land that of israel uh that you know his descendants uh, specifically through jacob uh would eventually inhabit and uh and uh you know create that that nation the nation of israel uh so you know that the the this is you know god leading him to a promise uh, but it required him to be obedient in that situation. Uh, so what can we take for this? What what can we take this from this? Well, I, I think uh, in our own lives, callings uh, are never necessarily always going to be the same. And there's always, there's going to be some differences. There's going to be occurrences that are, are surprising. Uh, things that might not even necessarily look like callings. And oftentimes, uh, these can even be scary. They can be, uh, you know, very mysterious. I 100% believe that Abram probably, uh, you know, might have been a little bit nervous about, uh, you know, having to walk out and leave, his, you know, the area of comfort that he was, the place of comfort that he was, where his family was, uh, and head out on this journey to a land that he doesn't necessarily know, that he doesn't necessarily know will be welcoming to him. Uh, But he does so anyway, and he is, of course, rewarded for it. Uh, So we ourselves should act in a similar way. Obedience is, whenever it comes to promises and, uh, you know, callings being one of those things, obedience is something that is consistently shown in Scripture to be the most important thing, being obedient to God. Uh, if you want God to do great works in your lives, if you want God to do great works uh, through you, uh, you got to be obedient to him. That is the number one thing. And in this very little story, we see that in action. We see that Abram's obedience, his willingness to go ahead and say, you know, uh, I'm going to trust you, God, that you're taking me to a better place, leads him to this promise, to this promised land. Uh, and so I would encourage you all out there, go and be obedient to God in your daily lives and you'll find uh, that God will bring things to you uh, that you couldn't even necessarily imagine. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our last worship song today.